Hey there, I'm Volton for Voltage Productions, and welcome back to another video. This one's a bit different. See, it's October, right? And you know what is uh, kind of scary, I guess? SCP! And I didn't really attend for this to be an October special, but it is now. A month ago now, I recorded 13 hours straight of survival playthrough of Roblox's very own SCP-3008, the game. So yeah. Here's what happened in those 100 days. Starting off on day one, I opened up the time menu so I could set the seconds up to 240, which would be 4 minutes. I wanted the days themselves to be 4 minutes and the nights 1 minute. I wanted to do that so that way I would only have to record for 8 hours. If I didn't do this, then I would have to record for 16. And after a bit of exploring, I was able to find a food court. I labeled it with the waypoints. After that, I found a pallet area, which was perfect. These are amazing for building a base with. You're usually always going to see at least one pallet area in 3008, in a public server at least, with a base already built into it. But I'm on a private server here, because I wanted my day counter to be semi-customizable at least for what I had in mind. I didn't end up doing the whole custom time thing because I can't customize that for some reason anymore properly. Day 2 I started building my main base. I wanted it to be a sky base so I decided that for how to get up to the base I would just use ladders. That was a very bad idea. As you can see I kept falling off. And you know what? I may even die. Day 3 was more so the same thing for, for the most part. More so just putting up more ladders to try and get the sky base up even higher. And uh, well, as you can see by the end of the day, there is a Blood Knight. Now I'm just going to explain Blood Knights for those who don't know. Blood Knights for usually only have a 1 in of chance of happening on most days. Every 10th day though, there is a guaranteed Blood Knight. I was not expecting one on day three, so that was kind of shocking to say the least. Day four was a bit of a bloodbath, I'm gonna be honest, it was literally a bloodbath. Basically I was I continued trying to move pallets up, but I accidentally dropped a pallet off instead of placing it correctly. So I tried climbing back down the ladder to go get it, and yep, that's the first step of the video. And no I will not be resetting, I do not have time for that. Thankfully I respawned nearby, but then not long later at all, I fell off again, and died again. So I died twice on day 4. By nighttime, I had gotten back, but I got bored so I went out looking for things, just for the sake of it. And I was able to find a GameCube. That's cool. Day 5 I started out by looking for something so I could complete one of the achievements in the game. The one I was hoping to achieve was either this one, where you have to land on a beanbag or something to save your fall, or on whatever the hell this, however you pronounce this thing, to also save your fall. I spent half of day five looking for it, both of them, and I eventually found a beanbag. After that, I brought it back, and well, yeah, just kind of sat up there for the rest of the night. Day six was pretty basic. I mainly just tried finding the box for the achievement. I couldn't find it, but it's super close. I'm just dumb. Anyway, I looked around for something, I don't know what I was looking for. Also, apparently at some point I put down these weird ladders, I don't know why. Day 7 I tried doing the achievement again, but it failed because I didn't notice at the time, but I'm pretty sure you have to be in a public server for this to work. I was on a private server. And I went looking around for supplies, and I eventually found another GameCube. Wow. Anyway, I continued, I put that down back at the base and continued looking for supplies. While I was looking, I didn't find another GameCube, but I did notice my inventory was full, so I thought, hmm, since Skype is going to be my new base, I may as well put this stuff up there. So I did that, and I promptly fell on the ground. And then, while I was running back, it turned over into nighttime. And while I was going around in the night, I found another GameCube. By day 8, I knew my first guaranteed blood night was going to be coming up on day 10. So, I needed to make sure my base was decent enough for when that happened. As such, I spent it mainly collecting resources and also expanding my, uh, my base. However, I fucking fell off again. So, yeah. 
basically one death every other day. What made it worse was that when I started going back towards my base after I respawned, a blood knight fell. I have there's a 120 ch if chance of one happening on a non-scheduled day. Thankfully, I was able to find a place to survive for the night, but my luck was really bad. After the blood night was over, I went went back to over to my base. I noticed where I had died and decided that for the time being, it would probably not be a very good idea. It would probably not be ethical at all, actually, to make a sky base. And so I decided to just expand my first ever shack. However, by the end of the day, it wasn't done, so I just boxed myself in and waited for the night to be over. Okay, by day 10, I knew there was going to be a guaranteed blood moon tonight. I wanted to get as much progress done on this version of my base as I could. I grabbed some extra supplies and, well, the blood moon began. I was able to survive tonight, but... <sighs> Man, there's not really much to do when you're hiding alone inside of a shack made out of pallets. All I did day 11 was just work on the base, that's all. Same with day 12, just worked on the base. Again with day 13, just furnishing the base, that's all. Day 15 was the first foggy day of the challenge. Basically mean that outside would be covered in fucking fog. Literally everywhere. And I get much progress done to base day because of that, because during foggy days, employees are still hostile. Day 16, things were going a bit better. I had an idea of how it could potentially salvage the sky base. Stairs. Yeah, that's... That's it. Stairs. The reason why I didn't think of this before is because, well, you know, I kind of thought of ladders before. It was also at this point a challenge it, I decided that I'll be allowing myself to skip normal nights, as that would speed up the challenge drastically. It can make the challenge less just 13 hours and not than the usual 16. Listen, I had to make some shortcuts, okay? Days 17 and 18 were spent doing the same thing, building the staircase. Day 19 was spent doing the same thing, but I was running low on pallets, so I started building a ramp up instead. Thankfully, I was able to make it back up to the top. That night, it was a guaranteed blood moon. I was going to be getting one no matter what. I was able to survive, thankfully. I had set myself a personal boundary, so I could not skip blood nights. I mean, I could, but I didn't want to. Day 21, I mainly just spent it looking around for stuff. Not much else. Day 22, and Editor Volton has just remembered what Pass Volton was looking for. A heavy wooden box. I didn't know where the one at my uh, main base was, so I went out looking for another one. Anyway, yeah, I was able to find one at probably the smallest uh, industrial shelf I think I've ever seen in this game. But whatever. Anyway, I continued trying to pick it up into day 23. Day 24, I mainly spent it looking for resources because 925, which was coming up, was going to be a bear 5 night. And I may be thinking, Bolton, you, you can't get bear 5 nights anymore. There was for an April Fool's update. And you're right. However, I'm playing in a private server here, and because of that, I can make Bear Five Nights happen myself. So, I knew that I would be making one happen soon. As such, I decided that I would just make one happen to make things a bit more interesting. Day 25, alright. So, this one I spent mainly just giving my base some more upgrades, and also doing some supplies up. After that, it was time. Bear 5 was coming. And he literally never showed. Or at least I couldn't see him because I am very blind. In fact, when I was recording this, I was wearing my old glasses. You know what? I probably still wouldn't have seen him now, but still. But hey, at least it looked nice. So day 26 was a weird one. I started off by going inside my original base and just kind of sat there while I was actually reading the SP3008 wiki and got some very weird ads. Anyway, after that, I threw some ladders together to create an easier way to get between my sky base and my ground base. Day 27, I started by staring off into space for some reason. Listen, I have ADHD, okay? Then after that, I just continued working on the sky base. Day 28 was basically the same thing, just working on the base. Day 29, I started putting in railings in my base. Day 30 was the first of three apocalyptic calendars I would be encountering in this challenge. An apocalyptic calendar it is an event that happens every 30 days, guaranteed, which basically means a foggy day that precedes a blood night. 
I was gonna be getting a Blood Knight tonight, obviously, but I was also getting a Foggy Day today, guaranteed. That basically just means this is the most dangerous time to be outside. So that was obviously dangerous. As you expect, Blood Knight. Day 31, I just moved stuff upstairs. Day 32, I mainly just continued moving stuff up. After that, I started grabbing some purple lights, because purple is the best color and I needed more decoration. Day 33, I just continued putting furniture inside my base. Day 34 was a weird one. I started off by just moving some more stuff up to the sky base, and decided that I needed a new, uh, I needed something new to look at. So I ran off into a faraway area and began building a new base. Don't worry, this won't last me too long. If you want to know what I'm building, I'm building a tower. I'm not sure why, I thought that would be cool or something. Yeah, I really don't know what I was thinking here. Just know that once I'm done building this tower, I in, in like a few days, I basically just go back to, uh, to the sky base and just never go back. Okay, I know this part of the video is probably going to be the most forgettable because I literally never came back here after day 41, I think it was. So let's make days 36, 37, 38 a lightning round. Across those days, all I did was build up the tower. Okay, day 40, so it was more or less the same thing, but tonight was a blood moon night. So I needed to get an upper platform finished before the night actually began. I was even able to get some of the railings up, but by then, the night had begun, and I mainly just spent it watching YouTube because there's nothing to really do during a blood night. Day 41, I continued working on a base, this time she's getting more ladders for railings. As I was going out though, I noticed that there were two play places right next to each other. Apparently these are meant to be rare. Day 42, just working on the house, I need more railings. On day 43, I, can I actually decided to start adding some lights to the tower to make it more interesting. But then the fantastic arrow joined, so we hopped on a call and I uh, gave him a little tour. Eh. I got some water. Good. Oh my god, that is, that is one buff guy. And now admittedly, this is my second base. Did you, did you lose the first one? That's actually, uh, yes. My face really low. Then that would mean, uh, oh. Huh. Wait, does that mean on day 50, bear 5 returns? Oh, that's nice. Oh. I have game cubes, yep. yep. I swear, these used to be a lot rarer. I don't even have a single one in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Lived! Wait, what? Probably not safe. This is, this is a real safety hazard. It is. It really is. Dude, it really is. Ah! <laughs> I, uh, I lived on third. Oh. Normal blood night. Hey, look what I got. Scrub daddy. You bitch. Server admin, and there's a thing in the, game, in the thing called the king menu. I'll never take me alive! <laughs> Arrow shattered. Anyway, that's over, and now it's back to voiceover Volton. Anyway, it turns out, uh, this was an unexpected apocalyptic calendar. I knew there would be one on days 30, 60, and 90, but not on day 45 and also technically day 44. Apocalyptic calendars are either preceded or succeeded by foggy days. And well, since this blood night was followed by a foggy day, it's an apocalyptic calendar. I was not expecting to have one today, but whatever, I just continued doing my thing. Day 46, I started off by actually first getting out of my base as usual, and then I found where Arrow had previously smashed right into the ground when he shattered. So I grabbed his food and also grabbed some extra snacks from around the area and moved them back up. Day 47, I grabbed some more stuff and continued moving some more stuff up into the sky base. Day 48, I just started picking up this box because uh, I wanted to see if I could get the achievement. I didn't know at the time that you needed to be on a public server to actually get the achievement. Day 49, I started off by just putting that wooden box back inside of the base. After that, I went back down to my first base and decided that there was no real reason to keep this waste of space and waste of pallets around anymore, as I really needed the resources. So I decided that I would just make that front area the base itself and just keep it around for old time's sake. Everything else would be torn apart and used as salvage. 
And so, I began working on the second floor. Day 15, nice. We're around ha halfway there now. I spent the daylight hours looking for some more supplies to get through the night. And then once night fell, Bear 5 was back. Obviously I used a whistle occasionally to try and see where he was, but as the night went on, I could hear him. And so, I looked over my balcony's edge, and down there, I saw him. Bear 5 was right down there, climbing up my stairs. Those AI suck, so he didn't get that far. But yet, I could see Bear 5 just on my stairs. This one ended up being the closest encounter I would have with him, unfortunately. Anyway, throughout the rest of Day 51, I got more resources and started working on a giant VP for Voltage Productions near my Skybase. Why? I wanted to. Day 52, I finished up the VP. I really don't know why I made this, but whatever. Then after that, with the little time I had left, I tried seeing if I could trap this uh, its employee with a bed. I could not. Day 53, I just worked on the base. I needed to get the second floor finished. Day 54, by then I had the roof pretty much done, so I was just getting railings in. Day 55, just got more railings in. Day 56, I finished getting railings in, got a light upstairs, and collected some more food. So on day 57, half the time I was talking to my boy Fantascaro because I'm gonna be honest, at this point I was going a little bit crazy. Then after that, I just got more lights upstairs. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure what I was doing on day 58, but I do see I was gathering resources. So that's what I'm gonna say. I gathered resources. Day 59, I'm still looking around, and you know what? Now I think about it, I'm probably looking for a jungle scosh. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? It's Swedish is Germanic. It, it, that's probably what it is. I was looking. I was probably looking for one of those. While I was looking, though, I found another GameCube. Huh. I found like five of these in like what the first quarter of this challenge, and then it just stopped appearing after that. Well, I thought these were meant to be rare. Why do I have six? Because of the way uh, 3008 works, Day 60 ended up being yet another example of the apocalyptic calendar scheduled this time. So yeah, obviously I was going to have to be much more careful this time. Thankfully, I was able to get through tonight successfully. Day 61 and 62, I was looking for another GameCube. Though on Day 63, my luck improved as I finally found another GameCube. After that, I started working on a project that I decided to call the Frat House. Day 64 started off with the equivalent of walking into a room and then forgetting why you're there. See, earlier I had actually moved Scrub Daddy and Scrub Mommy into my old house. However, I figured I'll probably tear it apart anyway for parts, so I moved them up to my house. After that, I continued working on the frat house, which was just... I named that because it was made out of purely beds. That's my logic. Listen, I was probably real sleep deprived at this point. Day 66 and Day 67, I just worked on the frat house. Day 68 was a foggy day, so I just stayed inside my house and watched YouTube. On day 69, I finished a frat house, moved the narwhal inside, did this weird notion for some reason, and by the end of the day when I came back home, I found out that Scrub Daddy and Scrub Mommy had Scrub Baby. So obviously, you know, by now, there was going to be a blood night coming up tonight. But this time, I had an idea for how I can make my base more organized. So here's what I have in mind. You know how I've always had my food just kind of stored up in a big pile literally at my front door? Well, I have a solution. Let's put it all in a bathtub on the second floor. This was a much better idea and it gave me something to do during the blood night. Day 71, I start off by looking around for something, I don't, I don't remember what, and then I decided that I was sick of hearing the goddamn background music because at this point I've been playing for hours. Hours. So yeah, I decided that it would only be fair if I started listening to Eminem. Anyway, I cleared out a space for a new build I'm making. This is the shrine to the Lemon Cult. No, I'm not okay. Day 72, I worked on a glass wall for uh, the Lemon Cult. Same with day 73. Day 74, I just continued putting up some more walls. Day 75, Bear 5 is going to return tonight. However, I didn't really care about getting supplies, so I decided it would probably just be best if I continue working on the lemon cult place which i decided to call lemon grabs because adventure time i forgot about fiona and cake to be honest anyway that night bear five did return but nothing significant happened but he will return one final time on day 100 so maybe something interesting will happen then 
Day 76, I continued working on lemon grabs. Same with day 77. Day 78, I started off by just building lemon grabs again, but also started grabbing more resources too, and that's a good thing because it turned out that to be a blood night. Day 79, I went back to that first food court that I don't really go to anymore because it's too far away, to collect some lemons that I dropped off somewhere maybe like the first 10 days or so for inventory space. I figured, well, they should probably get their own spot, right? And that's part of the reason why I made lemon grabs, so they'd have their own place in the world from now on. Those original lemons are now sitting on top of that fireplace. They are the holy lemons. Anyway, day 80, at that point I realized that because of the calendar system in-game, day 100 was going to be Christmas Day. So I started making preparations. I started first by making a big ass table out of all the pallets. However, I didn't get much progress unfortunately today because tonight was a blood night. Day 81. I spent the day grabbing lemons so I could put them in the lemon shrine. If you cannot tell by this point, I was kind of going crazy. Day 82, I was back to work on a Christmas celebration and I started getting some chairs down. Day 83 started out pretty simple. I started off by just grabbing some additional resources. After that, I started working on a snowman. If I got it, it will not look like a snowman at all. I had to compromise, okay? Day 84, I brought Jungle Chicago over to the Christmas celebration area and sat him down as the first guest. After that, I went looking for a new play area to get toys to continue building the, uh, snowman. So yeah, I continued working on that. Day 85, I just continued working on the, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't call it a snowman, but I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna still keep calling it a snowman. Day 86, I actually finished the, uh, snowman. So yeah, now there's something in the background that looks absolutely terrifying. Day 87 was a foggy day. So, I decided to just stay in the base. I didn't want to get swarmed. Though that night, I did decide to just pick up the box that I had placed inside my base and put it down at the Christmas table. Day 88, I actually put the box down at the table, and then I ran back over to where I had built the tower so I could grab a tall work light to bring it back over for the Christmas table. Day 89, I grabbed more lemons from the lemon shrine and brought them over to the Christmas table because, you know, most families will eat a ham or, or, or a turkey if you're weird. But... In this household, we eat lemons. So day 90 was the final scheduled return of the apocalyptic calendar. So I decided to first mainly just spend it moving the scrub family down to the dinner table. They are going to be waiting here for the next 10 days, but don't worry, they're motionless. Anyway, that night, I just kind of waited out the blood moon. Day 91 was spent moving all the stuffed animals I collected down over to the table area because I don't have any friends to celebrate with. Day 92 was also spent just getting more guests. Day 93, I spent the day actually setting up uh, infrastructure to capture an employee. I figured, well then, I may as well share this uh, Christmas dinner with the, my tormentors. No, that was stupid. But yeah, I got the infrastructure set up anyway. Day 94, I kind of just spent just wandering around doing random stuff, mainly just because go time was night time, because if I wanted to capture an employee, what I was going to need to do was get an employee to chase me, but they only do that at night, so I didn't really have anything to do today. So I kind of just wandered around. I tried to do this on the night of day 94, but it didn't work, and in the end, I just kind of went on to day 95. Anyway, as for day 95 itself, I, it was kind of just repeat of day 94, just kind of waiting around for go time. But again, it didn't really work. Same thing on day 96. Anyway, on day 97, I finally gave up and decided to just put a mannequin there instead. But that was a lot easier. That, that could have saved me a lot of time. Anyway, I ran back over to the tower to tear up this wall for some reason. At day 98, there was nothing more I really needed to do. So I kind of just grabbed more resources to put inside my base. Okay, so day 99 was meant to be a world tour, but I forgot that my mic is incredibly low for some reason. I have to turn it up in editing. And I didn't want the game to be too loud, so I'm just going to do a voiceover over the footage I recorded for the uh, world tour. Here's my base. Here's the giant VP I made for vanity. Here's the Christmas table. We'll be back here tomorrow. Here's the lemon shrine. Here's where I first started. And finally, here's the frat house. The tower does not matter. Day 100. Wow. I actually made it. Anyway, after I got out of the out of lemon grabs, I got up to the table and 
just started talking to the guests about how grateful I was that all of them were here. But, uh, yeah, nah. I, I definitely kind of lost my mind at this point. But to be fair, I think anyone would. Anyway, by the end of the day, I knew I still had one thing left. The final Bear 5 encounter. But I figured this time, I would face him head on. At Lemon Grabs, of course. At the beginning of the night, I went into Lemon Grabs and, well, I kind of just waited for Bear 5 to arrive. And it looked like he was coming, but I guess it just took him too long. He never arrived in the end, but you know what? I did it. I survived a hundred days in Roblox's SCP-3008. I'm proud.